What is going on guys, DBG here, in this video we are going to be doing a gameplay with the Pink Diamond Dan Isla card. Obviously, as you guys probably know, this right here is in my account. Um, I currently on PC, I'm 7-0, but um, basically what 2K did is, they kept your wins from the previous tier, which is a little bit flawed. So that means, like, to be fair, they're, um, like, I'm not complaining, I think on the PC I'm only a couple of wins off getting it. So I will probably get it. On the Xbox, I think I'm 6 or 7 and 0. So I probably will get it on Xbox as well. On the PS4, I think I'm 4 and 0. So obviously I do have a little bit of a head start. But obviously that's a huge advantage for the people that went, say, 12 and 0 for the fourth time in a row. Directly before, say on Sunday, that went 12 and 0. Whereas they should have just stayed at 11 and 1. And it's actually kind of almost discouraging people from playing the game. So if you win, go 12 and 0, uh, get the card, and then you go and go 11 uh, and 0. It discourages you from playing that last game for an entire month, which I think is something that 2K really should think about. Like, obviously, obviously, the fact it didn't reset is the reason I have this card, was the reason this guy was able to get him, and it's the reason I'll be able to get him easier, hopefully, on all three systems. But, um, yeah, it's just something that's it's kind of flawed, and it leaves some people in a very... Uh, screws some people, to be honest. But to be fair, everything in 2K screws some people. But, um... Anyway, this is on the Xbox, and a big thank you to the guy who uh, let me use his account. So, um, we have got Dan Issel at Power Forward. So, initially when this card was added, if you guys have looked at 2 County Central, you would have seen that this card had 91 in every single stat. And no matter what, like, every single stat for him had 91. I think this was so that they didn't release his stats too early in the game. And, um, it turns out that... They released him in the game as a 91 in every single stat. So there was a stage where Dan Issel had 91 in everything. So um, he comes with two Hall of Fame badges, pick and roller, pick and popper, 19 gold badges, woman fast break, difficult shots, mid-range Jedi, brick wall, bruiser, tireless score, catch and shoot, chase and eyes, lobsy finisher, post rise, rim protector, putback king, defense top of relentless finisher, post spinning ignition, drop stepper, open on a specialist, break starter, and hustle rebounder. He's got a diamond shoe on him, which gives him a 97 standing layup. He's got a 96 shot mid and a 92 shot three. Hopefully he still has the generic release like he did last year, which means he's going to be completely money if he does. Passing vision goes up and block goes up. Bit of a weird diamond shoe, but um, still diamond shoe. Decent driving dunk, good standing dunk. He's got terrible ball control. When that was 91, apparently he was like a glitch speed boot. He was like 6'10 or 6'9 speed boosting, hitting every shot. Apparently he was just a complete glitch when he had 91 in every stat. But um, great rebounding stats. He's got good speed and acceleration, terrible speed with boss. He's not really going to be pushing the floor much. He's got great defensive stats. He's really versatile, great in the wing, great in the post. And in general, should be one of the best cards in this game. This is the team we're running with. We've got Jeff Petrie at the one, or Jeff Petrie. I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. But Jerry Sloan at the two, Rudy Tomjanovic at the three, Dan Issel at the four, and Mark Eaton at the five. With the bench, actually, I'm going to change that. I really am the fan of Mark Eaton, to be completely honest. Um... Is this guy, is this a sharp? No. If this was a sharp shooter, I'd use his, my player. Because he's got a 95-3 on that sharp. But, um, I got Dirk at center. And then I'm going to run Porzingis as my center off the bench with Jared Jeffries at the four. And Yanis, Eddie Jones, Clay Thompson, Jeffries. I actually want to put in Peterson at the three. And, yeah, so this is quite a nice team. It's the team that this guy went 12 and 0 with. So, anyway, yep, this is a solid enough team. Now, let's get on to the hot zones for Dan Issel, and then we are going to get on to the game. So, Dan Issel has got hot zones almost everywhere inside the three-point line, and one spot outside the three. He's 6'9", but he looks huge. Like, is it just me, or is his player model look way bigger than 6'9"? Like, he doesn't look any smaller. He looks the same size as uh, Jar Jeffries, who's uh, 6'11". He's got the generic release which is one of the best releases in the game, without that. So, the generic release team is... Jar Jeffries has the same release. Uh, Tamjanovic has the same release. I'm trying to think who else has it. Um, Junior Bridgman has the same release. Is there any other ones? I can't really think of any other ones. I know Danny Granger had it last year, and Pete Maravich, Nikola Jokic, uh, Antoine Walker, all of them had it in 2K17. But, um, yeah, so he should be one of the best shooters in the game, Dan Issel. He was a card that I really like in 2K18. And this card is almost identical stats-wise to his uh, 96 overall diamond from last year. Like, there's only a couple of stats difference. So, um, yes, yeah, solid enough shooter. Okay, he's got a bit of a Dirk fadeaway, which is actually quite good. The one-legged fadeaway gets a bit more separation. 
Okay, he does not even look at the basket there, and his dunk animations are always fairly good. Where last year. So anyway, now let's just green one three. And come on. Now let's get on to the game. Alright, so Blaine's Curry, Clay, Durant, Bob Lanier, and Ben Wallace. So two shooters against two non-shooters is the bigs, and hopefully we should be alright. Dinosaur does everything Ben Wallace does. Literally everything he does. Except he can shoot the ball. Which is so, so important in this game. As Dinosaur knocks down the three. Three. Dinosaur again knocks it down. Out to two. Down. Go. Take him inside. Let's spin him. Kick the shooter. Fake. Fake. You got him. Easy dunk for Issel. Let's go. Bit of an opposite approach here. Because LeBron is... Okay, he just left him. There we go. Good job. Oh my god, that missile blew the layup. And got swatted. How did he miss the layup? Good shot. Good shot, that missile. There we go. Back him down. Back him down. Hit him with the spin. We got him. Easy dunk. Ben Wallace is a beast on defense, though. I gotta give it to him. I gotta give it to him. He's got difficult shots. Shoot that. There we go. A little bit late, but I'll take it. All right, let's go to the bench. All right, so playing Damian Lillard. Victor Oladipo, LeBron, Lamarck Sargent, and Embiid. So I'm um, not a bad team, but not a great team. This will burn the middle. Tough layup. Great defense by Embiid on help, uh, helping in there. Oh, we got him. We got him. We got him. Good block by Embiid. Wow. Not a good start to the game. Good hand by Issel. Forces the air ball. Let's go. He's got that extra little bit of speed. Okay, fade away. Good shot. Green light. Here you go. He's got goal difficult shots, so we've got no problem pulling up for them shots. Issel attacks the rebound so well. Like last year, he was an insane rebounder. Like there was loads of cards his height with similar rebounding stats. Issel was by far the best of them. Forces. Oh, good block by Embiid. I need to stop taking out Embiid. He's already blocked me two or three times already. It's still a good steal and good dunk by Issel there. We got him. Okay, we got him. Easy here. Easy. That's got to go in. He, was, he wasn't even basket side yet. That's got to go in. Decent shot by Oladipo. We need to get that board. He's cleaning up on the boards, though. I have to give it to him. He's cleaning up in that area. Okay. Good shot. That's a good shot by Issel. Like six points. He's probably shooting... Wow, three of nine. That's bad. That's a really bad start. We got him, surely. Surely not Oladipo. Okay. I thought Oladipo was going to stop him from making that layup. Is that good, though? Like eight points. Four or ten. Not the worst. Good shot by Isol again. I hit that pull-up midi. Is doing, he's doing really well with that shot, to be fair. Like, this guy's defending pick and pop well. Which is a bit of a problem. Because that's really the main thing I'm going to be using Isol for. And he misses the wide open midi. I should have taken the open dunk though. That is my fault completely. I can imagine like this would be a much, much closer game if we stopped shooting with Giannis. Jumper from mid. Good shot. And Jump can't hit it. Come on. Down four. We just put up 19 points and a half, which is pathetic. Like that is absolutely pathetic. Gotta finish that over. Lillard! It's Lillard! That's not a good finish. He's not great at going to the basket. Like he is literally a pick and pop jump shooter. And if you can't get him into ping-pop situations, he is not the best card in this game. To be completely honest, good fade. It's another bad miss. That is another shot he should have hit. Let's go with Emjanovic. Let's push it. Hit Dirk. Wait. He's open. Green light. Let's see if we can get him with pick and pop. Wide open. Dan Issel. There we go. Green light. Fade away. Good shot. Here we go. And Simmons. Come on, he spins us way too easy there. Two terrible defenders. Well, post defenders in, uh, pick and roll defenders in Simmons and Elo. And we get to Isla who greens it. All right, these are his last three shots. Dan Isla, don't step in for two. Thank God you hit that shot. But don't step in for two. Stop. Get it to Isla for three. How do you miss that shot? 92 open shot three. That is wide open. 
Not a good shot. It's not a good shot. Let's get this board. That's that's a bad shot. That is a bad shot and it went in. It's now an eight point game. You gotta be joking. He jumped in the air and managed to get the steal. Oh. Down 10, two minutes to go. Like if we just keep getting scores, we're all good. Fake. I'm jumping. Another bump steal! Oh my god! What? But like, when were bump steals so bad? Like, when were they so bad again? Like, obviously they were really bad last year. But like, is it just recently that bump steals have become really bad? And he blew another layup. Good rebound. I'm one. Let's go. Okay, guys, get out of his way. Get out of his way. Just get out of his way and let him spin John Wall. Don't let John Wall stop you making a layup, Dan Issel. Tommy Anovich, get there quick. Get there quick. To the basket. Dan Issel wide open for three. It's a bad release. Good rebound. Issel from mid. He misses again. Issel from mid again. Okay, he can't miss three now. He makes this. We can't. Oh, you just got a rebound by someone with half the rebounding stats of you jumping at the right time. This card should be insane. It's just not very good. Good dunk, though. He's hot. And we lost by five. Ah, that's a that's the worst single worst game of 2K I've played this year. So Dan is only 27 points. However, he went 13 of 32 from the field, 0 of 2 from 3. He got blocked, I'd say, eight times. So anyway, that's the video. Is Dan Issel a good card? Yes. Is he probably the best stretch four in the game? Yes. I am not going to deny either of those things. Dan Issel's a beast. He definitely does not excel at attacking the basket. He's got some of the worst like layup animations in the game. He gets blocked so, so easily. His post fadeaway and hook take a while to get into. And also with his jump shot, it's tough shooting with him on the move. But at the same time, off dribble shot made a 90 with this. He actually shoots really well from fadeaway middies with that goal difficult shot. He is a really nice shooter even though, I don't know how, I think it was just a game where he just couldn't hit a shot there. Dan Issel is a beast of a card. And unfortunately, that gameplay just did not show it. But anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.